Shall we rise up, please? <clears throat> Let's close our eyes for prayer. A great God in heaven, we thank you very much for our Bible study. We bless your name because you have granted us journey mercies as we have come from various places and different districts in this group of districts. Lord, we pray as we come today together that you bless us and enrich our lives with your word in Jesus' name. That what we study will become practical part of every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you bless us. You bless our families. You bless all the people our lives will touch. As we go out to practice what we learn, even today at the Bible study. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study today. Those of us connecting with us on satellite, you might notice that there is a change of environment. We are at the IBTC, that is International Bible Training Center. And the reason for that is that we're having a planning meeting with your leaders from all over Nigeria, all over West Africa, and Central Africa. So we have quite a lot of our leaders here tonight. And because we are still continuing with the planning meeting, that's why we are here at the IBTC, and we have called our districts from Adlimo Shop, an old group of districts, to come together today for Bible study. Ali Mosho people, are you happy today? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, our region overseers and state overseers and national overseers. What you see here tonight is just Ali Mosho district. And also the orchestra is from Ali Mosho and the organists and pianists and the whole of the choir. We're not borrowing members of the choir from outside. This is just a limo short district alone. I tell you that to tell you this. It takes planning for a pastor, for a leader. And what we've done in Lagos here, I've made different groups of orchestra and choir to practice and to, uh, do, to minister during retreats and during other special programs. Of course, in leadership. When you begin to plan something like that, people are not willing to leave the comfort zone and do something new. Therefore, there will be a little bit of reaction. But in leadership, you do not mind the reaction because you have a goal. You have a dream. You have a vision. I'm waiting for the time. I'm planning for the time when Alima Show alone will be at our combined service. And then I will not be looking for choir from outside. I will not be looking for orchestra from outside. Ali Mosho people, I'm giving you a promise. A time is coming. Retreat. Retreat will just be, will just say, this is retreat. And guess who will be there? Ali Mosho, you know. Praise the Lord. I know you are happy. Happiness carries responsibility. You will do it. Now we come to our Bible study today when Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You would have noticed from the teaching of the Lord in the Beatitudes in particular that the Lord has been building up an edifice of truth. He presents the eternal message of heaven with an orderliness and progression that cannot be readjusted. You see, the Lord started with verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn. Verse 5. Blessed are the meek. Verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now he comes after all those blessednesses. Now he comes to blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
You see the mercy we're talking about? Number one, it's not mercy without sorrow for personal sin. You cannot jump, jump over and come to verse 7. Number one, you start with sorrow for personal sin. Number two, hatred for sin and repentance from sin. You see, if you're poor in spirit, if you're lowly in spirit, and then you mourn for your sin, you have hatred for that sin, and there's repentance from sin. Number three, there is mourning for sinners. You see, those are the people you come to show the mercy. You come to reveal the mercy. You come to demonstrate the mercy. You go through all those hurdles. You go through all those experiences. And there's mourning for sinners. Number four, there is also meekness of spirit. You know there are people that try to show mercy. They feed the hungry. And they bless the poor. But then there is no humility. And there is no meekness. They do it with haughtiness. They do it with pride. And that is not acceptable. Number five, there is hunger and thirst for righteousness. And then, number six, there is faith in the Lord. Our righteousness. Number seven, there is the practice and the life of righteousness. It is after all those experiences are put in place. Now the Lord comes and he says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The Lord is telling us then that the kind of mercy we show must be from the people who are kingdom citizens. And because of the poverty of spirit, they have entered into the kingdom. And these are the people that have received divine comfort for mourners. They are the people who have had the inheritance of the meek and they have imputed, imparted righteousness for the hungry and the thirsty. This mercy then manifested as a fruit of the Spirit is from a heart made righteous by the divine oppression of the mighty hand of the Lord. And now you can come to that blessed beatitude. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Very clearly then we ourselves must possess the mercy of God before we can show and stretch out that hand of mercy to other people. And then not only that, the mercy and the love of God must so fill us, we demonstrate it. We live by it. We walk in it. And then we're able to relate with other people, able to reflect the light of the gospel, the love of God, and the mercy of God unto all the people when we as believers stretch out the hand of grace and the hand of love and the hand of mercy to all the people, we find mercy, favor in the sight of God and in the sight of men. Second Samuel chapter 22. In Second Samuel chapter 22, we're reading from verse 26. 2 Samuel 22 verse 26 For the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful And for the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure For the forward thou wilt show thyself unsavory Isn't that exactly like what Jesus said? Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy you practice mercy and then you also have you receive the promise to the merciful in your life proverbs chapter 3 in proverbs chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4 let not mercy and truth forsake thee bind them upon thy neck write them upon the table of thine heart so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. I pray as you reflect the love of God in your life and you show and extend the hand of love, hand of grace, and of mercy to other people. Divine mercy and mercy for men will be bestowed upon your life in Jesus' name. I divide this study tonight to three parts. Number one, the pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. The pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Number two, personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy. Personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy. Number three, promises of great manifestation of mercy. Let's come to number one. In number one, it says, 
We're talking about the pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Come to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Be ye therefore merciful. But how? What's the pattern? How do we know how to show that mercy? Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. You see, when you're looking at Scripture, you cannot hang those verses in the mid-air and just say, be merciful. Blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain mercy. Sentiment may come in. The human milk of love may be the only thing that many people are manifesting. And because there is no pattern, and because there is no measure, and because there is no example, and because there is no style that you are going to follow, this one shows mercy this way, another one shows mercy the other way. But you ask yourself, you are to be as merciful as your God, as your Father who is in heaven is merciful. How is he merciful? That's the pattern. The pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Number one, the purpose of mercy. The purpose of mercy. You see, as we look at God, and we see God, a merciful God, we see that he shows his mercy on purpose. In Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, we're reading from verse 4. In Romans chapter 2, verse 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing <clears throat> that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Do you see the purpose of God's mercy? And you want to show mercy. You want to demonstrate mercy. You want to manifest mercy. There must be a purpose in your heart. A goal in your heart. An objective in your heart. The purpose of mercy is to lead the people you are showing mercy to. Lead them to repentance. Number two, the promise of mercy. The promise of mercy. As we look at the word of God. And we look at the pattern of God showing mercy. He gave the promise in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 72. Luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. The mercy promised to our fathers. It says, to, and to remember his holy covenant. And would you look up here for a moment? A man has just got his salary. And then he has come to the Bible study. And the Bible study that he learned is that uh, you must uh, show mercy, be merciful, and then you receive mercy. And he's coming home from the office. He has a salary with him. And then somebody meets him on the way. That he never promised anything before. He's a total stranger. And he's not thinking of the need of his family. And the need of the wife. And the need of the children. And somebody says, mercy, mercy. Be merciful unto me. He puts his hand in the pocket. And then the man says, I have a great need. And the fellow is crying. And he drops the whole salary in his hand. And then he comes back home and the parent, you know, the wife and the children, they are looking for money so that they can eat. And he says, well, there's no money. Didn't you get salary? Of course I got salary. Where is the salary? You know, I follow the teaching of the Bible that says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I gave the whole money to somebody that I made. Did you promise that person before? Didn't you promise your wife? At the end of the month, this is what we'll do. This is what we'll do. This is what we'll do. Did you forget your promise to your wife? Didn't you promise your children you were going to pay school fees? Yes, you did. But where is the money now to pay school fees? I have shown mercy. Follow the pattern. And look at God. Look at the pattern of God. Number one, the purpose of mercy. Number two, the promise of mercy. 
you will look at the promises and there are some bounding duties upon you you have a duty towards your wife a duty towards your children a duty towards the landlord a duty towards the people that you have to pay them because you are owing them and that promise i will pay my rent at the end of the month that uh, you show mercy also to your landlord and you pay him his money and the teacher you have employed to be teaching your children after school hours you told him i'm going to pay you this and that i'll be merciful. i'll not allow your your allowance to be delayed show mercy to that one and then after you have shown mercy with all those people and you fulfill your promise now all these other people that are coming if there is any extra thing then you know what to give out be systematic be understanding be scriptural the promise of mercy verse 73 the oath which is where to our father abraham that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the end of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the lord to prepare his ways to give the knowledge of salvation to his unto his people by the removal remission forgiveness of their sins through the tender mercy of our god whereby the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace number three the provision of mercy as we look at god and we see how he shows mercy and the mercy he has provided we have the provision of mercy we're looking at ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 4 ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even we even when we were dead in sins as quickened us together with christ by grace are ye saved you see the provision of mercy by the mercy of god we are saved and the greatest manifestation of mercy is when god looks at a sinner that ought to have perished in his sin he looks at a sinner that should have died in his iniquity and he shows mercy unto him and he forgives him isaiah chapter 55 isaiah 55 i'm reading to you from verse 6 and verse 7 Isaiah 55 verse 6 Six ye the Lord While he may be found Call ye upon him while he is near Let the wicked forsake his way And the unrighteous man His thoughts And let him return unto the Lord And he will have Mercy upon him And to our God For he will abundantly Pardon You see there He will abundantly pardon because of mercy That's the provision of mercy proverbs chapter 28 in proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 he that covereth his sins shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy number four the partners of mercy you see mercy is not an isolated trait mercy is not an isolated virtue mercy is not an isolated fruit mercy has partners and these partners must remain with mercy if we're going to follow the pattern of god you see there are people when they read the bible because they read just one verse of scripture blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy they don't ask themselves now i want to show mercy what's the purpose uh, for example uh, somebody is uh, using hard drugs if you know anything about those who use hard drugs it uh, is like a stimulant but then they become addicted to it and it's going to ruin them it's going to destroy them but the first time they try to stop or those hard drugs all the cells in the body will be aching and they'll be crying out for the drug and the joints and the bones and the muscles and the brain and the nerves will be crying out for the drugs but it's destructive it's just because they're addicted to it 
and the body is not used to not having the drugs there for the very first time anybody tries to quit it's going to really have some inconveniences and then the person comes to you and he says i'm dying i'm going to pass out i must have drugs now i know you are a christian and I know you people think that we should not be using our drugs. I'll quit later, but I try to quit. It's like my whole body is crying out. I'm going to die. Please, please, give me money. Be merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Don't let me die of my ache. And as you see him, and he says, you're not the one taking the drugs. You're not the one taking the drink. Just give me the money. Don't let me die. You say, well, to show mercy on this man. Because his whole body is crying out for the address. Let me give him. The question is, what is the purpose of mercy? And what is the promise of mercy? And what is the pattern of mercy? If you give him the hard drugs, you make him a greater slave. If you give him the money to go and buy the hard drugs and inject himself and try to stimulate himself again, it will feel temporarily all right, but it's been destroyed. We must understand that mercy is not an isolated virtue and that there are partners of mercy. Partners of mercy. What are they? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. You see, mercy must always have its partner. And that partner is truth. We cannot show mercy and fight against the truth. And contradict the truth. And oppose the truth. If we're going to show mercy, we must keep the partners of mercy along with that mercy. Micah chapter 6 that familiar passage of scripture we even have it in a chorus in micah chapter 6 verse 8 he has showed showed thee O man what is good and what does the lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy god do you see here the partners of mercy number one to do justly you want to show mercy if somebody is a drunkard and he's not taking care of his family he has spent all his money on drinks and his family is languishing in poverty and his children are not well dressed not because it's not working not because he doesn't have money he's using it on alcohol and then he comes to you and he says please i need money and you know you remember blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy but you ask yourself mercy has partners and we must not never allow mercy to be an isolated virtue and what are the partners of mercy justice to do justly and then also to walk humbly with thy god and showing mercy is just one of them there, one of the virtues there. So you ask yourself, if I give this drunkard money and I say I'm trying to show mercy, will that be just? If I say I give this drunkard money so that he will know that I'm a good person, a merciful person, will that be walking humbly with my God? The answer is no. I'm sorry, I cannot give you the money. Ah, but you're a Christian. Yes, I am. But you say you are following Christ. Yes, I am. And Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful. You must, so much, you must show mercy unto me and give me the money for drink. I say, no, you don't understand the Bible. I understand the Bible. Mercy is not an isolated virtue. I must allow the partners of mercy to always remain with that mercy. Hosea chapter 12, verse 6. Hosea chapter 12 verse 6 therefore turn thou to thy god keep mercy and judgment keep mercy and judgment and wait on thy god continually judgment that's justice two people come to you 
And as these two people come to you, it may be husband and wife that come to you for counseling. And as they are telling their story, you will see that this woman is being oppressed by the man. And, uh, you know, with that oppression, the man is looking up to you and he says, uh, Well, pastor, you are a man. Leader, you are a man. Counselor, you are a man like me. I know. You know, he whispers to you, Pastor, I want to tell you something in private that I don't want to say in the presence of my wife. Please, if you excuse her, you'll call her back later. I will, you know, be able to tell you. And then you say, Sister, please, I will call you back. Let your husband be free and let him talk to me. And so the wife goes out. And uh, then the husband talks to you and he says, my pastor, you are a man like me. You are married to you. And from the way we are talking, I was looking at the way you are trying to, you know, judge and moderate the case. And if you say I'm wrong in the presence of this woman and you say that my actions are not right, you're going to erode into my headship in the family. And when we go back, you are going to give this woman words to say that uh, the pastor told you, you are not treating me well. Therefore, pastor, show mercy and help me so that I can still keep my airship in the family. You know, when my wife come back, comes back now, I'll correct those things privately. But tell my wife, you are not doing right. You yourself, you should have done like this, like this. My pastor, if you tell my wife like that, I will change. But you know, with these women, you understand, you are married to. And then uh, the wife uh, comes back and you want to show mercy to the man. How about this woman that has been oppressed? What are you going to do? And you, don't you remember that mercy is not just for this man. That's almost killing the wife. And wants you to support him. So that he will be able to keep his position. Understand, mercy is not an isolated trait. Mercy has partners. And what are the partners? Look at that. Hosea chapter 12 verse 6. Therefore turn thou to thy God. Keep mercy and judgment. You'll tell that man, yes, I want to, I pity your condition. But you know you have to change. You've been dealing with your wife like a slave. Like a rag to clean the, 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 the floor. And I must tell you the truth in the presence of your wife. In fact, I'm showing mercy to you. Because that will help you to change. And to turn around. And then live a new life. And your wife will enjoy the marriage. Understand. There are partners of mercy. Number five. The perversion of mercy. The perversion of mercy mercy you see there are people that do not have balanced understanding of mercy and they pervert mercy and they think they are showing mercy but really they are not doing the right thing in uh, first kings chapter 20 first kings chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 31 and his servant said unto him behold now we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. We have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Peradventure, it will save thy life. So they gathered sackcloth on their loins and put robes on their heads and came and, and came to the king of Israel and said, Thy servant ben Hadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And he said, Is he yet alive? He is my brother. Is calling an enemy, my brother. Is calling a gentle, my brother. Is calling the uncircumcised, my brother. Is calling the unsaved, my brother. Is calling the one that was fighting against the nation Israel, that if he had his way, he would have conquered Israel. He said, He is my brother. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything will come from him, and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Ben Hadad, 
Then he said, Go ye and bring him. Then Ben Hadad came forth to him, and he caused him to come up into his chariot. And Ben Hadad said unto him, They began to discuss. And then we're told in verse 35, And a certain man of the sons of the prophet said, Now come to verse 39, And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, That's that prophet. And he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life. Or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. The prophet actually was telling a parable, an illustration, a story to the king to show him his foolishness and to show him the perversion of mercy. And then it says, And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself has decided it. And he hasted, and he took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets and he said unto him thus says the lord because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom i appointed to utter destruction therefore thy life shall go for his life and thy people for his people the perversion of mercy you see ben hadach his cup of iniquity was full and God wanted to bring judgment upon Ben Haddad. That's what he does. He brought judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. He brought judgment upon Pharaoh and his servants. He brought judgment upon Egypt. He brought judgment upon Sennacherib. He brought judgment upon Herod. He brought judgment upon Nebuchadnezzar. We know God is a balanced God. He punishes iniquity. And Ben Haddad at this time, his cup of iniquity was full. And God was still going to use this king to bring that judgment on Ben Haddad. But then he thought he was showing mercy. And because he perverted mercy, then the prophet came and said, The Lord has sent me to you. That because of this, your life will go for his life. And your people will go for his people. Now number six, the practice of mercy. The practice of mercy. In Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 30. And Jesus answering said... A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him at death. And perchance by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side and likewise a Levite when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was when he saw him he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine first aid and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pairs and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again i will repay thee which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves and he said, he that showed mercy on him. When people are unfortunate in life, and you can save their lives. When people are losing their lives, or they are losing their family. 
and God has given you the resources to be of help. They may be believers, they may not be believers. At least you can preserve their lives for the time. They'll be able to hear the message and the word of salvation. Somebody is hungry. And if we don't help him, he might die of starvation. And food is necessary. Food is not alcohol. Food is not cigarette. Cigarette is not food. Alcohol is not food. And the drugs are drugs. That's not food. But when somebody has a legitimate need, food, something to sustain his life, he is not saved yet, but he wants his life to remain until he hears the word of salvation and then he responds to the word of salvation. Or maybe he's even born again like a widow, like a widower, like a jobless, unemployed person in our community, in our church, or outside our church, in our community. And God has blessed us. You have paid your debt and you have done the, uh, the normal things that you ought to do. You are not checking your responsibility to your family and yet you still have extra resources by which you can take care of course we are going to take care the practice of mercy and then in the latter part of that verse 37 then said jesus unto him go do thou likewise number one is the purpose of mercy number two is the promise of mercy number three the provision of mercy Number four, the partners of mercy. Number five, the perversion of mercy. Number six, the practice of mercy. Number seven, the period of mercy. The period of mercy. In Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. This man had died on us. We have the time of probation. And that's the time we can show mercy. And that's the time the Lord can even show us mercy. If we miss it while we're here on us now. And then after death on the other side of the grave. We're now asking and pleading for mercy. No. The period of mercy is when we're still alive here on earth. Verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. And cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received, receives thy good things. What do you think the Lord gave you those good things? To lead you to repentance. You have exhausted the period of mercy. And the Lord wanted to lead you to repentance by the good things he gave you on earth. But you rejected the mercy of God in your lifetime. You have received those good things. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which will pass from hence to, uh, to you cannot. And neither can they pass to us that will come from this. If we're going to show mercy at all, this is the time to show that mercy. We've seen the manifestation of the mercy of God. Because of his mercy, that's why he saved us. Because of his mercy, that's why he's blessing us with all the things he's blessing us with. And we are to follow the pattern of God. We are to follow the precept of God. We are to follow the example of God and be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. I come to point number two. Personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy. Personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy. And let's look at Matthew again. Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, Let's remember in verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You were poor in spirit. You repented. Now, is, does your repentance force God to forgive you? No. It's because he had mercy on you. That's why he forgave you. You might cry your eyes out. You might say you repent. God doesn't owe us forgiveness or salvation. 
But he says, I will show mercy. Let the sinner forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man forsake his way. And the wicked man is thought. And let him return unto the Lord. Here is the mercy of God. He will pardon. He will have mercy. You were poor in spirit. And because of the mercy of God, he brought you into the kingdom. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. That's the mercy of God that he has comforted you. You were a sinner. You mourned for your sin. After you were saved, maybe you backslid. Like Peter, Simon Peter. And then Simon Peter cried. He mourned. And the Lord forgave him. Or maybe it's a relative, a friend, a, your convert that was backsliding. You mourned. And the Lord forgave him, forgave her. And the Lord comforted you. Was the Lord forced to do that? No. It's the mercy of God that comforted you. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. You started inheriting already. Some of the things on earth. Now this earth, already you have inherited and you have got a parcel of land. That's part of the earth. Already you have built a house. That's part of the earth. And the motor car you are using, where do you think it comes from? It's from the earth. Don't you know that all those things, do you dig all the iron and all the steel and all everything? Do you dig them uh, from this? Uh, uh, do you get them from the sky? No, they're from the earth. All those things you are now inheriting, you pray, Oh Lord, give me this. Your food, where is it coming from? It's from the earth. Whether it is maize or whether it is rice or whether it is jam or whether it is potato. Are those not the things that the Lord has given you? And as you are following the Lord, the Lord has been giving you the inheritance of this part of the earth and this part of the earth and this part of the earth. And the Lord is still saying that even eventually when he will set up his millennial reign, he'll say, reign over five cities, reign over ten cities, you will inherit the earth. Is that by marriage? No, by mercy. He has given those things to you by mercy. And blessed are they that hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. For the Lord to impart unto you his very nature of righteousness. That is mercy. Now the Lord is saying, as a mark of gratitude that he has shown you mercy, and he brought you into the kingdom, he has shown you mercy, he comforted you. He has shown you mercy. He gave you some inheritance on earth. He has shown you mercy. He has filled you with righteousness. Be grateful. And that personal gratitude will then lead you into the ministry of mercy. Blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain more mercy. In 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, reading from verse 10 and verse 11. First John chapter 4 verse 10 Herein is love Not that we loved God But that he loved us And he sent his son To be the propitiation for our sins Beloved if God so loved us We ought also So to love one another That is show gratitude Be grateful That the Lord has shown love to you And because of his love you want now to relate with other people in the love of God. Verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he that loveth God... Love is brother also. You love God because he has loved you. God has shown mercy to you. You think about the great sins you have committed. Almost unpardonable. But God says, don't worry. I'm a God of mercy. I forgive you. And then now he expects you to show that same love and kindness to your neighbors, to the brothers, to the sisters. In Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. For Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Not for your own sake. But Christ died for you. Are you a father? 
And then your children offended you. And as those children offended you, uh, those children, they don't know how to come to daddy to say, daddy, I'm sorry, or we're sorry. And then the mother comes to you, and the mother says, my husband, I really understand. You know, I've talked to our children. These children should not have behaved like that. And on their behalf, I'm really very sorry. Please, let's keep this family together. Forgive them. Please, not because they're good children. God will help them. God will answer our prayers. They'll become better. Please, I'm your wife. For my sake. What do you say? And do you say, please, don't talk about that. I don't want to hear anything about that. Those children, I'll deal with them on their marriage. You are my wife. You are nice. You are good. I'll deal with you on your marriage. But you know what the Lord did? God forgave us, not for our sake. For his sake, for Christ's sake. And it says, forgiving one another. Even as God has forgiven you for Christ's sake. And, and sometimes, you know, it's other people that offended you. And other people, they see that this fellow has not done right. And the fellow is immature. He's not thinking through about the offense he has committed. But as an elderly person, an intelligent person, a spiritual person, and he's watching the way this uh, you know, fellow has done, who has offended you. And he comes to you and he says, uh, please, uh, we know that, you know, you, uh, we appreciate you, we love you. And we know you are, you, you are maintaining your stand. But you know, this uh, fellow will talk to him. But you know, it will take time. And that's what we call conflict resolution. To resolve conflict. Somebody comes as a midman, as a referee. And he says, please, there's a peacemaker. And he says, please uh, forgive them. Says, no, I'll never forgive them. Because they have not done well. Well, we know they have not done well. That's why we came. For Christ's sake. For the sake of this person coming. That is saying we realize that fellow has not done well. These people have not done well. For Christ's sake, for our sake, and for the sake of progress. Forgive. That's the mercy. And then you remember how God has forgiven you. And because God has forgiven you, then you also you want to show that forgiveness. In, in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Well then, if we have the ministry of love and the ministry of mercy, and we're going to have the ministry of mercy. I said we'll have it in Jesus' name. How do we then recognize that we have this ministry of mercy. Number one, the demonstration of mercy. You see, there are people that will say, of course I'm merciful. Am I a wicked man? Of course I'm merciful. But brother, demonstrate it. Let us see it. Let's enjoy it. Let's see it like this, tangible, visible. Number one, the demonstration of mercy. In James chapter 3. James chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Good fruits demonstrated. Number two, the devices of the merciful. The devices of the merciful. Uh, you know, if you don't plan it, you cannot demonstrate it. If you don't devise a means, you will not be able to demonstrate it. You see, that, that's what happens to people. And they just say, okay, I'm, I'm forgiven. And it's all right, I, you know, I will show mercy. When the situation comes, when the opportunity comes, you plan it. The opportunity may not come, devise a means. Devise a method, devise a plan by which you can demonstrate 
that mercy. And then we will know you really have the objective and the goal and the plan and the desire to carry it out. The devices of the merciful. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 21 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 21. He that despises his neighbor sinneth, but he that has mercy on the poor happy is he. Do, do they not err that devise evil, but mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. You devise it. You plan it. You put a process in place by which, by the grace of God, mercy will flow through you and flow to people. So, we must devise means by which we can reach people, we can touch their lives and show mercy. Number three, diligence in showing mercy. Diligence in showing mercy. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 21. Proverbs 21 verse 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. You follow hard after it. You pursue it. You run after it. You are diligent in seeking the way of peace. Number four, discretion in mercy. Discretion in mercy. Now, discretion means that you are, you are watchful. You are even selective, I might say. You are selective about your action. You are watchful about the things you say. You see, the mercy we are talking about is not somebody just being sentimental. And then he just, he, he, he goes with the wind of emotion. And you know, when his emotion rises up now, you know, if you come to him at the right time, when his emotion is stirred up, he can empty his purse and empty his bucket and empty his bank account and give it to you. If you come at the right time when the wind is blowing his emotion, and then at another time, if you come another time when he's not feeling like that and his emotion is not like that, and the wind is not blowing his emotion in the, in the right direction, he closes up, he's stingy, and he's a uh, he's, uh, hard fisted. And he cannot give anything. We're not talking about that. The people that work on emotion. We're talking about the people that intelligently, objectively, in a reasonable way, in a systematic way, in a calculated way, they have discretion. And they're showing mercy with discretion. They go through the Bible. They understand, this is the need. This is what I have. These are the other things demanding my attention. This is what I can reasonably do without offending God and without contradicting any other part of the word of God. That's discretion in Psalm 1, 1, 2. Psalm 112. I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 112, verse 5. A good man showeth favor, that's mercy, and lendeth. He guideth his affairs with discretion. Guides his affairs with discretion. Here we are now in 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, reading from verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. You see, showing mercy, there's discretion. There's discretion. You know, somebody comes to you, for example, and he says, uh, you know, I, I want to open up to you. You are my pastor. You are my counselor. And please, I'm opening to you because I know you will not open your mouth to tell anybody. And he says, actually, he was responsible uh, for putting a girl in SS2, that is second, um, senior secondary school, class two. A year to finish, he was, he was responsible for making her pregnant, putting her in the family way. But the parents have asked me, and because I don't have enough money to take care of any pregnant lady now, I deny, but I want the Lord to forgive me. And something has been bothering me in my heart. That if I don't come out to confess, at least to my pastor, that uh, I will never be saved. I will not have restoration and forgiveness. Pastor, now I've told you, and my burden is over. 
Go and tell the parents, our pastor, that's exactly what, they, what I don't want you to do. Cover me up. And if they come to you, pastor, don't say, this is what I told you. Show mercy. If you cover it up, you're a partaker of other men's sins. You see, there's discretion. There's understanding. There is Bible. There's scripture. In showing mercy, somebody breaks away from another church. And as he breaks away from that other church, he comes to you. You are an overseer. And he says, overseer, uh, I want to start my ministry. How many people did you take away, steal away from that other place? I took about half of that congregation. I bought the offering. I took some of the offering. Did you tell your senior pastor there, you are going away? No, if I told him, he will not allow me to go. But I want you to lay hands on me. Show mercy. God has called me. I don't want anything to kill my spirit. Just show mercy unto me and anoint me and ordain me and send me forth. I have confidence to a deeper life, a man of God. Once you do that, when my mind will be clear and free. I know I will succeed. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't be a partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. That's not showing mercy. There is discretion, understanding of scripture in showing mercy jude i'm reading from verse 21 jude verse 21 keep yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life on of some have compassion making a difference on some examine the case investigate the case Look at the case very well. Then you will know whether this is a case you ought to show the kind of mercy they request for. On some, have compassion, making a difference. On others, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. I hope you understand. Somebody comes and he says, I've been a prostitute for, more, for many, many years now. In this recent crusade, I've given my life to the Lord. And this lady now says, I don't have accommodation. And now you are doing follow-up. You happen to be a woman, a married woman. And you know the problem of your husband before, and the Lord saved him. And you know the problem you almost got into with your maid. Before the Lord rescued the situation. And now you've gone out to do follow up. And this lady said, I've been a prostitute. And now I've given myself to the Lord. My problem is I don't have any accommodation. And you say you're following me up. Where am I going to sleep? Oh, then you say, come to my house. I am married. Are you sure you are saved? Of course I am saved. Yes, she is saved. Just last week. Just last month. And it's good to disciple her. And for her to have a total break from the life of the past. Then you bring her to your house. And she looks uh, beautiful, of course. If she wasn't beautiful, how would she be a prostitute? A successful one for that matter. And then eventually now you go to sell in the market. And your husband at present doesn't have any job. And he is the only one always at home from morning till afternoon, teaching her Bible and doing follow-up. Why are you laughing? <laughs> You'll get into trouble. That's why there is discretion in showing mercy. And that's why it says here, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the very garment spotted by the flesh. Number five, the deeds of mercy. The deeds of mercy in Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We're looking at verse 21. The deeds of mercy. The wicked borroweth and pierce not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. You know, if you're a merciful person, the first place to show the mercy to start, the deeds of mercy, is to pay the people you owe. And after paying them, then you go ahead now to give more. And then number six, dedication to mercy. Dedication to mercy. Zechariah chapter 7. 
Zechariah chapter 7. We're reading from verse 9. Zechariah chapter 7. Reading from verse 9. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Number seven, the declaration of the merciful. The declaration of the merciful. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. That's the declaration of the merciful. We have received mercy. And because we have received mercy, we have also received the ministry of showing mercy, of demonstrating mercy, of reconciling sinners with the Lord. And if we actually follow this, mercy will never leave us. As we are showing mercy to people, God will show you mercy. And people will show you mercy. Your life will be a fruitful life. Your life will be a happy life. And the mercy of God will never stop in your family. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Point number 3 now. Promises of great manifestation of mercy. The Lord has promised us. That if we will show mercy. Then we will receive mercy. Let me put it this way. For your own sake. For your own happiness. For your own joy. For your own satisfaction. For your own fulfillment of life. Show mercy. Because you know what you sow. You will reap. Don't worry about other people. You know what happens to us. Sometimes the Lord is telling us. Show mercy to that brother. Show mercy to that sister. And when you show mercy, add something valuable to their lives. Make them happy. Make them joyful. Make them fulfilled. Dry their tears. End their days of sorrow. And you say, no, I will show mercy. But I'm waiting for him. Let him also show mercy to me. Don't wait for them. You show mercy. Because if he doesn't show mercy, then he will not read. Then he will not have the mercy. You know what you want. You want to be happy. Sow happiness into the lives of other people. You want to be joyful. Fill other people's lives with joy. And you want to have mercy from God and mercy from men. You also show mercy to other people. Don't wait for other people. Do you want to wait for him to be happy before you become happy? Do you want for him to be joyful before you become joyful? If you had your way, will you not want to be joyful now, happy now, blessed now, receiving mercy now, having the fruit of the goodness of the land and of people around you all showered upon you? That's what you want. And because of what you want, that's the reason why you say, I know what I want. I want mercy from God. I want mercy from men. And I know the way that leads there. If I show mercy, then heaven will so arrange everything. Mercy will come from left, right, and center. And will be showered upon me. Because that's your desire. And because that is the promise you want to claim. Then show mercy to all the people. In Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thine, about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Proverbs chapter 11. Reading there from verse 16. A gracious woman retained honor. And strong men retain riches. The mercy. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul. 
The merciful man doeth good to his own soul. That's what I'm saying. Now you have you are living with somebody. He's merciless and he's hurting himself. He's an angry man and he's giving himself also. He's a sad man, a gloomy man. He's giving himself hypertension. Are you going to give yourself hypertension because the man you are living with is giving himself hypertension? Are you going to make a situation of ulcer for yourself because the woman you are living with is a difficult woman and is uh, getting ulcer for herself? Are you going to be miserable because the people around you, they decide to be miserable? No. A merciful man, a merciful woman doeth good to his own soul. You want to be happy, just be merciful. You want to be joyful, just be merciful. You want to be contented, just be merciful. You want your ulcer to go away. And you want all the things that is eating you. Don't you know anger gives us ulcer? Don't you know that indignation gives us ulcer? Don't you know bad relationship, conflict gives us ulcer? Have you not found somebody that in the morning he was all right and he was working well and he has all his muscles and all his limbs, everything well, all of a sudden something happens, he gets angry. And as he got angry like this, something, you know, the blood system was affected and he was paralyzed right there, stroke. He gave himself stroke. But if he had been a smiling man, a joyful man, a happy man, an easygoing man, a generous man, a philanthropic man, a merciful man, just showing mercy to people, whatever you do, that's, that's, your, that's your duty, that's your responsibility. You get angry, your anger will not make him angry. And your negative attitude will not make him negative. He's doing good unto his own soul. That's why the Lord is telling us, for the merciful man, for the merciful woman, you are doing good unto your soul. I pray this good will be lavished upon your life. In verse 25, 11, that's Proverbs 11, verse 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered himself. The Lord will water you. And the Lord will bless you. When do you want that blessing to start? I said, when do you want your blessing to start? If it is now, then decide and say, I will not miss a day without showing mercy to somebody. It may be a little child, dry their tears. Maybe a sorrowful woman, do something that will bring comfort to the life of that woman. Maybe any of these are brothers and sisters. Put happiness, plant happiness in the lives of others. Happiness will never live your life. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We're going to be merciful. We're going to be merciful. Because that is doing good to our own soul. Don't wait for others. Just go ahead and show mercy. Just go ahead and show love. And the Lord was giving us the promise. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. You will obtain mercy from the hand of the Lord. Open your mouth before the Lord, my brothers and sisters. And pray. And say, Lord, I will be merciful. If I hurt others, I'm hurting myself. If I get angry at others... I'm killing myself. If I am stingy, if I don't take care of my wife, I'm hurting myself. If I don't take care of my husband, I'm hurting myself. If I don't take care of my children, I'm hurting myself. If I don't show mercy to my children now, when they grow older and they are working, now they are helpless, they depend on me. If I don't take care of them now and show mercy unto them now, Later, when they have money and they could take care of me, they may not take care. We hurt ourselves if we don't take care of other people. Your neighbors, all these are our brothers and sisters. We see those who are in need. And we see those who need the basic things of life. We have enough and to spare. Show mercy. The liberal man. The liberal woman shall be made fat. Heaven will smile at you. The promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. 
God will bless you for showing mercy to one of his creatures. For showing mercy to one of his children. For making somebody happy. In every action, make somebody happy. Make somebody happy. Make somebody feel important. Make somebody feel like a human being. Make somebody feel like an important person. They come to you and they're feeling dejected. And they're feeling unwanted. And they're feeling miserable. Show mercy to them. That they will say, Lord, I thank you. I'm still important. I'm still a human being. Somebody can show mercy unto me. When you make somebody happy in your life, many, many people will gather together to make you happy. Show mercy. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Make up your mind. Take a decision. It doesn't just happen automatically. And if you have not been, um, you know, like, that's not your personality. You're not of the personality that normally shows mercy. You live your life. You spend your money. You mind your way. You just go your way. And you don't know that anybody is suffering anywhere. Make a decision. Oh Lord, this is what I've been in the past. By your grace, in your strength, in the love of God, this is what I will be now. God will help you. Take a decision. Make a declaration. Declaration of mercy. This is what I will be from now on. This is how I will live my life from now on. Yes, we ought to show wisdom. But it's even all right to be at fault, be merciful, than to be so extra careful, so courteous, that then there's no mercy anymore. If we're going to make mistake at all, let us make mistake on the side of showing too much mercy. That's a good mistake. Even though there's no mistake, that is all right. But if you're going to make a mistake at all, make a mistake on the side of showing too much mercy. Being too much kind. Being too much loving. Being too much considerate. Being too much accommodating. You're going to make a mistake at all. Don't let it be that you are so extra careful. Too careful. Too watchful. Too discretional. That then the milk of love is dried up completely. Show mercy. Love others. Demonstrate it. Don't let it be an empty love. A dry love. Let it be real. Make up your mind. A day will not pass by. I will show practical mercy in the lives of those who cross my way.